Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel Tomcat Stitchery. I'm Whitney and today we have our hashtag work or WFH module sew along work from home module sew along video where I am sharing the bottoms of my module. Um, obviously today is Wednesday. I'm sharing this a day late um, but I wanted to do a uh, my love notions post yesterday um, just to give people if you are interested in buying any of the patterns during this wonderful sale they only happen twice a year. Um, I wanted to give people plenty of time this week because it's a short sale. It's only through uh, it was through Monday morning um, through Friday this Friday at 5 o'clock um, Central Standard Time here in the U.S. Um, so not even a full five days. So I want to give people ample time to take advantage of that sale if they were interested. So we have done the work from home module so along today on Wednesday. So the vlog that normally goes up today is actually going to go up on Friday. It will still only be from um, Wednesday through Tuesday of this week, but um, it's going up on Friday. So the days that you've missed will go up on the following vlog when we're back to normal schedule. <laughs> And then, yeah, and then Sunday will be a sew along per normal. So mixing things up just a little bit this week just because um, I didn't realize there was going to be the sale until kind of last minute. And I wanted, definitely wanted to give people a chance to shop that if they were interested. Okay, guys, I have made two bottoms and I love them both. <laughs> so if you guys um, are familiar with the... Um, my plans. I had planned to do a skirt and a pair of pants with this module, which is what I have done, and I'm very excited about showing you what I have done. Now, I had three fabrics picked for these two bottoms. I wasn't sure what I was going to do. I had a wool crepe, a wool gabardine that were both a camel color, and then a plaid um, worsted suiting um, uh, wool pant weight. <laughs> That got weird. So um, I just wasn't sure I was gonna to do the two patterns and I was gonna pick two of those fabrics. I wasn't sure what. So I ended up going with the plaid and the wool crepe and the wool gabardine went back into my stash for I'm sure something soon. <laughs> So um, let's get started. I am modeling both of these items because I don't want to show them with the uh, module tops until the very end. So I'm modeling these with my um, Itch to Stitch Hepburn turtleneck that I'm wearing today um, just to keep things kind of neutral on top so that you can really see the bottoms. Um, so then, yeah, you won't see the bottoms with the tops or the topper or my one piece all together until the very, very end. So you'll just have to wait and see. So we'll start with the skirt. So. For my skirt, I made the, um, and I'll show you pictures of me twirling in these as I am talking, uh, but I made the Closet Case Fior skirt, which is part of the Rome collection that she released, it's like May of 19, I think. Um, anyway, it was a three-piece collection, um, the Cielo dress and, and top, um, the Pietra pants, and then the Fior skirt, obviously different um, variations with each pattern and um, everything was made up in linens and stuff like that because it, it was released in May. But I had a few people say that they had made both the Pietra pants and the Fior skirt and wools and they just really loved them. So I decided to give that a go. So I picked this beautiful camel colored wool crepe from my stash and I made view C, I believe, which is the button down version with these nice big pockets. But I made a couple of um, adjustments because I used wool. Number one, I lined the inside of the skirt. I'll show you that in just a second. Um, and I also lined my pockets because of that. Um, let's see, I made the longer version. There was an above the knee cut line and a below the knee cut line. I made the below the knee cut line, but then just didn't make any length adjustments, which makes this a midi skirt on me. <laughs> so if you're taller than 5'2 and you want a midi skirt, you will have to lengthen the skirt. But um, if you're short like I am, you can do the below the knee version and it's a midi skirt. <laughs> Um, yeah, so it's got the beautiful button front placket. Um, I chose these beautiful, um, I'm saying beautiful a lot here, uh, kind of a, uh, it's a plastic button, but they're kind of a um, tortoise shell um, from my stash. I inherited those from my mentor, Joyce, which was part of that. Um, let's see what else. I've lined the pockets in the same silk that I lined the skirt, which is not part of the pattern, but I didn't, I wanted to give the crepe a little bit more body so that, um, cause these pockets can get kind of flimsy pretty easily and crepe is, you know, not a, uh, sturdy, it's not as bodied of a fabric. So I went ahead and lined them in the, the silk and I wanted, you know, I just wanted something soft for my hands to go into. And it's a great way to finish off the curve of the pocket. So can you see even the curve? Yeah, there's the curve in the pocket. Um, just made it easier to finish it off as well. So if I turn this inside out, you can see how I did the lining. 
<laughs> so I didn't have enough of uh, either silk, so I used two different silks. Um, so we have a patchwork going on on the inside. This is the same fabric I used to line my Hollywood trousers that I made for the spring great module sew along. But basically, I just, let's see, basically I cut the um, silk off at the above the knee line so that I had, you know, plenty of room and I didn't have to worry about the silk popping out. I also didn't let the silk hang before I hemmed it, so it's like totally, look how much, you know, there's only that much difference on the side, whereas there's quite a bit more. Let's see, that's, like, look, there's hardly any there, and then if you look at the... Um, where's the front? <laughs> you look at the front, there's quite a bit more. So my silk, yeah, like that's on grain, so that's how much should be between the silk lining and the, um, and the hem. And then, yeah, you get to some of these sides and it's, it's, my silk has fallen so much, but I wasn't really concerned about that because I, it's still short enough. There was so much room. Um, let's see, I just surged the bottom of the lining because I didn't want a hem showing through on the right side, especially because I sewed it into the, um, placket. Uh, I made the front and I made the, or made the skirt and then I made the lining and then before I finished off the placket, I had just basted them together at the waistband and then sewed everything as one from that point on. So that's why I just surged that, just to finish it so it didn't ravel, but also I wanted it to stay, um, as light as possible on the inside. So yeah, my silk dropped a lot. Surprisingly, my crepe did not drop that much, but I did let it hang and I did uh, level it off a little bit, but it really didn't drop that much, which was exciting. Wool's a little bit more stable um, weave, usually, or fiber in its weave, um, but crepe will a lot of times fall quite a bit. But this was pretty good. I had very little to trim off, but I did have to level out my hem. Um, what else to say? I mean, it's just a perfect standard wool skirt. I think this is going to get worn a ton. This is a fixed waistband, but I think, um, since cutting sugar out of my diet, um, I haven't been having as many issues, uh, keeping that under control, my, um, waistline fluctuating. Clearly, sugar is a trigger for that. Um, let's see. I don't even know what else to say. I did, you know, the buttonholes, vertical buttonholes. I mean, it's just a very simple skirt, but I love it so much. It's gonna go with so much in my wardrobe. Um, my new turtleneck that I made from um, the Style Maker Fabric Tour, it's gonna look fabulous with that. Very excited about this. So anyway, there is my skirt. Four piece, I kinda, I just steamed this, so I really don't want it to get all wrinkly. I haven't done the twirls yet, so I want that to stay as unwrinkled as possible. Okay, for my trousers, I did the Untitled Thoughts Chandler trousers out of this worsted suiting that um, I got at SR Harris. I did, see this pant pattern comes with um, a darted front or a pleated front and you can make them shorts or pants. I did the pleated front on these. Uh, the pockets go all the way to the front. You can do just a straight front where you don't have anything or a faux fly. And now she has a post on her um, uh, blog that shows you how to use the faux fly option and make it a real fly, which is what I did because I just wanted to play around with it. Um, although if I were to make these again, I think I would just do the faux fly. I do like the, um, I think it just looks more like a traditional uh, trouser with the fly detail on the front, but I have such a small waist to hip ratio that I, I mean, I don't, she has options for putting in a side zip as well. If you just need it for your, if your hip to waist ratio is um, larger and you need a little help, um, because there's uh, elastic in the back to help that stretch, but if you just need a little bit of extra, and this you could do as well instead of a side zip. So I, instead of, she shows you how to use a button to close it. I just did a hook and eye, because I think that looks nice and clean, and I think I'll always wear these with a belt. Um, and then it's just got this vintage, I use this lime, or this uh, mint green vintage zipper from my stash. It's all nice and finished off. I, I sewed the elastic and then I sewed channels on top of it to keep it from turning on me. But yeah, I think next time I would make, I mean, I'm glad I tried the zipper fly just for the fun of it, but I think I would do the, um, just the faux fly next time, just for ease. You could make these up in no time at all. I uh, spent a lot of time matching my plaid on my side seams and everything else. Um, which I totally didn't think about, and I only had a yard and five eighths, which typically a yard and a half is enough for me to do a pair of pants, but when you're having to match plaid, so you're matching vertically as well as horizontally, um, it was a little touch and go, but I 
managed to do it. So um, I lined it in some, uh, just some acetate lining from my stash that I had like scraps for the pockets. The pockets go all the way to the front. Did I already say that? So it gives you kind of a pocket stay, um, kind of flattens things out a little bit, which is very welcome. Um, no pockets on the back. It just has the gathered. Uh, so for this pant pattern, I would definitely recommend choosing something lightweight, which this is. It's a worsted suiting weight, so it's a thinner wool um, suiting. And um, I think it gathers really nicely. I also think adding in this, adding in the line of stitching. So I'm basically, I was stretching and sewing on top of the elastic helps keep your gathers evenly dispersed as well. So you don't get like everything moved over to one side and it's super chunky and it keeps things laying down. So nothing is like poofing out because um, it was a little poofy before I did that. Um, so I'm, I'm very glad that I did that. It does come with belt loops, so you can wear a belt. So you really can't even tell that there is, a, you know, elastic going on necessarily in the back, which makes these look like a, just a great trouser. Um, I'm just over the moon with these. Uh, and the worsted suiting is, even though it's wool, it's very, very soft because it's very finely woven, very tightly woven. So it makes a very uh, soft, fine finish. It also doesn't wrinkle very badly um, compared to other, um, you know, weaves of wool. Um, it makes it nice and smooth. Men's suits are often made with the worsted uh, suiting weight because uh, they don't wrinkle. And a lot of times, even in men's suit pants, they may have lining in the top part where it comes down to like mid thigh and then it's just pinked off. Um, very rarely are they fully lined. So I thought, you know, this will be perfect. Um, and it feels great. It's not itchy at all. Now for the bottom, she does recommend, you know, uh, tropical weight wools, which are just lightweight wools, um, suitings, that kind of thing. But most of the uh, recommendations for fabrics are like chambrays and linens and that kind of thing. So for the bottom hem, she has, you know, turning three eighths and three eighths. It's just a double turned hem with the top stitched uh, hem. And I did that on this and just didn't like it. You know, they're wool trousers. So I ended up just um, turning the hem allowance, which is three quarters of an inch. I surged it and then turned it up and then uh, by hand, blind hemmed those. So I thought I just thought that those looked more like trousers and a little bit more um, polished. So that's what I did for the hem on those, which weren't in the instructions. Her instructions are great, by the way. And she's got a lot of blog posts and stuff that um, will hold your hands videos and stuff that um, will help you make these. This is a, be a great first pair of pants to get like a look of a trouser without having to do a lot of the tailoring and stuff that comes along with like a real pair of trousers. Um, so I highly recommend this pattern. It was fantastic. Now this one is made for someone who is 5'8 with a longer torso. All of her patterns are drafted. That's what her block is. And it says that on her website, or maybe it's just on the pattern. Anyway, I did have to take four inches out of the length on this one um, in the leg. I did not have to do anything with the rise though. So, um, you know, I guess longer torso must mean like upper body, like if you're making her dresses or stuff like that. Um, but yeah, I, the only thing I had to do was I made a, a size according to my hips. My waist put me in a size up, but because of the elastic, I went ahead and just made a straight size five, I think, um, which was for my hips, and this fits fantastic. You can obviously, she gives you instructions on how to adjust the elastic, trying them on before you sew everything up. There's a really clever way that, because um, there's a facing on the inside here, the waist piece actually gets sewn to the inside like a facing. Um, she modeled this pattern off a vintage pair of trousers that she has, and, um, it just works really well, but there's, it, it finishes off really cleverly. Her instructions are wonderful. And, um, yeah, it's just a really great pair of trousers. I will definitely make these again. And I'd love to try the darted front as well. I think those are really fun. I love the pegged leg on these. I just think that they're very flattering. Um, it's a really good, it's a, it's really good. I really like them. <laughs> so that wool gabardine that I have might become a pair of these as well. We'll see. Anyway, love, love, love these. Um, yeah, they're just, they're going to be perfect in my wardrobe, especially with all the browns and stuff that I'm adding in. And I can't wait for you guys to see these with my three tops. So anyway, that is what I made. I'm trying to think, is there anything else that I need to tell you about either pattern? And I don't think so. I've told you the alterations that I made. Um, I just made the straight size 12 with the, with the Fior skirt, because that's what my waist, I made it by my waist, because it's a full skirt, so um, the hips really didn't matter. Um, so I just made it to fit my waist, and it does. Um, yeah, I think that's all I've got to say. <laughs> All right, that's all I've got for today for my bottoms for my work from home module sew along. Don't forget we do have prizes and you just need to have your stuff all posted by 
October 31st, midnight Eastern Standard Time here in the US, and I'll be randomly picking a winner on um, Sunday, I believe. I think it's a Sunday, is November 1st. Um, and you'll be, uh, that'll be the winner for the $50 Screech Owl Fine Fabrics gift card, as well as the um, one month subscription to the In the Haystack digital sewing pack. So um, very exciting. So make sure you get those put on Instagram. Also, just so we can see what everyone's doing. I just love when I get, I follow the hashtag and when the, the posts pop up and stuff and just seeing what everyone's doing and all the fall colors and it's just so wonderful. So um, yeah, definitely keep sharing on Instagram. If you don't have Instagram um, and still wanna show me stuff, I'd love to see all of it and I have my email always down below in the description box that you guys can email me anytime um, with anything really. <laughs> so I hope you guys enjoyed this one and have a wonderful Wednesday. I will see you on Friday with the weekly, last week's weekly vlog and um, the again on Sunday with the final part of the um, B6702 sew along. All right, guys, that's all I've got for today. I hope you have a good one and I will see you on Friday. Bye.